Uh, okay, so first on the agenda is to talk about uh, what you just worked on. So sure. I wonder if you want to start. Do you want to put it on the screen? Yeah, uh, I can do that. Give me one second. Get that up for us. Okay, can you all see that screen? Yeah. Yep. So just to walk you guys through kind of what, how my head worked in thinking about this and putting this together. And it still needs some work for sure. But as I looked at the detailed list of steps, Susan, that you had prepared for us and we walked through at the last meeting, what I thought about is that there appear to be three distinct phases to the next year. Um, one of them in the first one where we're in now is a bit of a planning phase, but also our effort to engage the community in both Berlin and Boylston. And so I've got that phase set up as really a five month period starting now through the first quarter of 2022. Um, and writing here that during this phase, the school committee will conduct meetings and distribute communications that are intended to inform the public on the role of school committee members on the election timeline and on the process for interested candidates to run for the available seats. Um, a couple of the specific items that were in the more detailed timeline that I pulled into this um, is that there will be a, a presentation to town officials and boards. Um, I think that Susan is you and, and Lori, right, doing that as chair and vice chair. Uh, we're going to the select board. I, I, and when you say boards who are, are officials, who are you thinking of there? I didn't want to get too detailed and kind of like listing town clerks and town administrators, but in my thought is that it's anyone, anyone who we think needs to know. And to some extent, I think you've already started to do this by talking to the clerks. I know in particular and, and others about this process. Yeah, I, I, the word boards threw me because I thought maybe uh, these we're not meeting with the board of health or the board of, you know, whatever. Yeah. Fire department and all those people. So it might be administrators or something there. Town yeah. administrators would would kind of yeah, cover I, our bases. I just took it to mean the both boards in both towns. Well, then the town of officials. Yeah. So I just want to be clear who. Yeah. So I mean, I can get more detail. I can put town clerks. Town Sorry. clerks, selectmen. Yeah, that's that's true to what we're doing. Yeah. Town clerks. Administrators and selectmen. Um, next thing I had here, and this is something that we didn't have, but I, I want to suggest we do, is that um, we have some opportunity in this period, especially for interested candidates, to attend an open forum type of meeting with the full committee, where we as the subcommittee will present the process and the timeline to anyone who's interested, and that the full committee will be available to take questions from interested candidates. Um, I know that the opportunity to ask current members about the role and how much time it takes them and those kinds of things would likely be welcomed, I think, by potential candidates. Um, and my thought was that the full committee would be available for that kind of forum. So that's in intended for people who might be interested in running. Is that what you're saying? I think that's the primary audience. I think anyone might otherwise decide to attend, but I have this timed before the nomination process. So, hey, if you're interested in running or learning more about being on the school committee, we're going to have an open forum where you can ask questions to the current members of the committee, maybe even the superintendent, um, and and do so because you know, our school committee meetings aren't obviously conducive to that back and forth Q and A. So I think it's a separate, specific time we do something like that. Yeah. So so it, it, would this include people who just want to understand more about you know uh, why the election didn't occur and um, what just uh, more about how the election process will work for the voters as well? I think from an agenda standpoint, I wouldn't necessarily get into why the election didn't occur kind of stuff, but I think if that's a question that comes up, we can answer it in the setting of that. Um, and, and that kind of, it's a good point because I also, and I don't want to jump ahead too much, but as I thought about FAQs, I thought about the typical questions we might get from residents and voters yeah. versus the typical questions we might get from candidates. So when I right. think about that forum, I think about building an agenda around the typical candidate. Yeah. 
But, okay. you know, if someone shows up and wants to ask a question, I think we can, you know, answer to the best of our ability. Okay. All right. That's helpful. I, I think there, it could be, um, I'm wondering if you want to frame it as a candidate forum. Yeah, I like that. Public, um, or a forum for candidates. Yeah. I, I, do you want to get into calling it candidate yeah. anything yeah. at this point? Because there are no candidates, language. you know? Right. It's not quite the right language. You're interested in running or something. Yeah. Maybe just maybe just call it an election information discussion or something. That's that's a good point. Election information session and, and will be published yeah. the agenda. Yeah. The agenda should make it clear that we're planning to talk about maybe it, it would be a great time for candidates to come to something like that. Because I also think there are likely to be people in the community who approach us, no one has yet, but people in the community who approach us over the next couple months wanting to know about running themselves. And it'd yeah. be great to be able to point them to this yes. as the place great. to be able to get asked their questions. Uh, the other thing is in, you know, I mentioned in the last meeting that I would, had drafted up a community engagement school committee goal based on the mm -hmm. feedback that I'm bring to the next meeting. And the um, one of the things on there is for the school committee to work with the administration uh, to host a couple of public forums. So okay. this is this fits right in. And then the third item I had pulled as kind of a high level item here would be that we will, during the course of this period, publish election information in FAQs on our website and that we'll share a link to that information across channels. So I think there's probably gonna be an opportunity for us to get an article written in the Telegram or the item, um, or the one and the same to some extent. Um, having it available in the school in the school newsletters that go out to parents. Yeah. Um, and also um, getting it posted in the community Facebook pages. I do think we're gonna to want to potentially talk to the administrators of those pages about how that might get posted appropriately um, and, and how often, right? But I, I, I certainly, I'd rather to some extent have those posts, I think come probably from you, Susan, in the pages um, and talk to the page administrator specifically about when and how they'd like us to do that. Yeah, I might add a, a bullet, although I don't wanna mess up your formatting. Um, the, I, it, I think the COA newsletters is another piece. I mean, I'm thinking about engaging other portions of the community beyond the school people. What's the COA? Uh, the Council on Aging. Okay. Um, so that's that. Go, those usually go out to everybody like over 60 in a community, and and actually uh, the over. I know in Berlin the over 60 or over 65 crowd is is a third of the town. Yep. Um. um. So something like I could that. see us looking at even like I know the Lions Club is pretty active in Boylston and we could take have some kind of, you know, communication we send out to some of those community organizations, including yeah. something like the COA yeah. and yeah. saying, hey, here's here's the information. Yeah, yeah, good. I like that. And I, I think though the highlighted groups you have, you've highlighted them because you're, you want to confirm them. Is that the idea there on this on this? Bach, yeah. I'm thinking that this is kind of the responsible party yeah. or parties from our standpoint, right? So I think the presentation to clerks is, is going to be you, you and or um, Lori, Lori yeah. um, the full committee to participate in the in the open forum opportunity, and that the subcommittee, this group, will be responsible for making sure all these things happen. Right. Um, and in right. some right. cases, specifically around the FAQs, I have a comment. I, I think we'd be good to get those FAQs in front of the committee. And yes. to get feedback on both, are they the right questions, and right. To agree with these answers because those answers yeah. are going to be committee answers, and make sure everyone has a chance to kind of weigh in on them. Yeah, the I, I think that's great. And so when we, if we include this, you're thinking of this as the cover sheet to the timeline, or, and, yeah. I mean, at least for going to the selectmen and the administrators, I wouldn't put this timeline to the public. This no, I don't. Yeah. Okay. I, I so, agree. I, I, I think the only public distribution of that timeline, Susan, would be during the school committee meeting when we present yeah. it to the committee. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily then publish that proactively on this this page. Right, right. If someone requested it, hey, it's available, but 
um, there's a lot of detail in terms of exactly who's doing what and specific dates and that right. just get too detailed yes. for the public. No, it's, it's not intended for public consumption per se. The, um, so when we put this sheet on top of this sheet for the selectmen and the town administrators clerks, would you include these roles in there or is that for our reference? I just wanted to, in this meeting, get us on the same page as to those yeah. three kind of responsibilities and I was gonna take that off. Okay, I mean, we should keep a copy of that in case okay. we wanna look back at that for ourselves within the yep. committee um, or, or even have this copy for when it goes to school committee because school committee will wanna know how that's parsed out. But when we send it outward, we should have a, like a copy without that probably. That's a great idea, yep. Okay. And then we move into this nomination phase starting sometime in April through some date in July. Um, and that during this phase, residents of Boylston and Berlin will be able to take out nomination papers from either the district clerk. And I think we talked about that being Christy, if I recall. No, we're gonna come back to that this next coming okay. up on the agenda. Or the town clerks, they can go to the town clerks to get their papers as well. Correct. And then, you know, from in terms of other kind of key activities that are gonna happen here, you know, in my opinion, right, the election information that we published here remains available on this on the district website, and we look to continue to just reshare and send as reminders that information out through whatever channels are available. And I kind of take all this stuff here and just copy it to here again. Yeah. Maybe in some of those other yeah. ones. And and we may update it too according to the kinds of questions that we see showing up in the. Totally. Yeah. I also think that at times. There might be things that are more relevant to the time we're in, yeah. and we might add additional, you know, right. kind of content. And that's why on the third page, I kind of added a little bit of a, um, a revision history for us to kind of just keep track of yep. where we're making those changes. And then once that nomination paper process is complete, I think we know that there's a, a process to certify nominations and do all of that, but. From a, from a public candidate understanding and voter understanding of what's happening next, sometime as early as May and through the election date, um, candidates will campaign for office and may choose to participate in organized public forums and to distribute campaign materials throughout the community. Um, this is a question I think we have to think about as a committee. And if we want to host some kind of candidate forum or debate as a district or as a committee. Um, I know that I, I happen to see that Worcester just had a school committee debate. I know, I think yesterday, um, I think part of that's gonna determine will be determined based upon how many candidates there are um, and how we want to, as a district in school committee, how do we wanna kind of position that type of thing? To me, debate, just the term comes across as a little more back and forth Trump and Biden, you know, arguing kind of thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. And maybe if maybe as a school committee, it's appropriate to organize a forum. And if the Worcester Telegram wants to organize a debate, then they can go ahead and do that. Or if a candidate wants to organize a debate themselves, they can do that. But I'm not sure that we as a committee necessarily want to sponsor a, a quote unquote debate. As somebody said to me, and I can't remember who who this was or what context, but somebody said to me they didn't think that the committee should be hosting any any kinds of for, uh, forum and debates around this because there could be a conflict of interest because members of the current committee are right. also running. Yeah, um, and um, in a lot of communities, uh, there are League of Women Voters who organize these things. I don't, I don't recall ever seeing an active group in this town, but I think like the PTO groups could easily sponsor these forums, I think. Yeah. It'd be a really interesting thing for them to do. That's a great idea. Um, uh, but there may be other groups as well who are interested in doing that kind of thing, but I think it probably should not be the district. Okay. Mike, you on the same page with that? Yeah, I think I, Susan, I think you and I talked about that at one point. Yeah, yeah. I'd agree yeah. with that. Maybe that was you that said that, yeah. So I'm just going to take that bullet out and basically go well, back to saying that. I think that it's good to say, you know, they, I, we said organized public forums, yeah, so that's, maybe you've got it covered there. Yeah, you take yeah. the district part out of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, the election will occur on November 8th, 2022. The six elected candidates will take office on November 9th, 2022. Yeah. I, I really appreciate the, um, always, um, the visual display of information. I Me just too. think that's always mm -hmm. helpful to, um, 
encapsulate the information into something visually memorable. Um, and I, I think this does that. Um, it also visually just sort of shows that there's a lot of work during the engagement phase and it gets sort of more and more targeted as you go to the right, to the election phase. And I think your, um, your presentation to the selectmen will be met positively with the community engagement piece here and us getting a little more detailed in that piece in particular about how we intend to engage the community. And I, I, I would be open to, you know, input from both select boards too, as to whether there's, as you just did with the COA newsletter, right? Are there other channels we're missing or I'm not thinking about our other activities they think we should be conducting during that community engagement phase? Because to me, that's the that's the piece that's probably been the biggest gap over the last couple of years of the whole election process. And, and even, you know, I think selectmen themselves prior to now haven't necessarily understood or known what is this process. And I think, like I said, you know, I, I know that when I went in to get sworn in um, myself, you know, you having gone and talking, having spoken with the town clerk in Boylston was the first time someone from the committee had done that. Right. And I think yeah. that, Showing we're doing that is, is a, a, an improvement from potentially the past. Yeah, I, I think so. That's the feedback I'm hearing also. And uh, I think those are all good uh, questions to bring to any group that we meet with or any individual that we meet with, including um, are, there, are there other questions that should be on our FAQs for right. residents, voters, or candidates that come to mind? Um, so basically getting feedback on all these pieces that we're about to start to work on. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think this is great. I would love to see this on top. Uh, uh, as I said, with, with the roles included for the um, town boards and the administrators and town clerks, so they have the fully detailed version. Yep. And then when we take this public, then I think we... Um, one of the tasks is to figure out, do we want to do a, a, a version that's either like this one on the screen or a, a down, a one page version of this that would be for the average citizen uh, or a candidate. There's um, a panther behind you, Susan, be careful. Yeah, I know. that's just one of my two panthers. This is, <laughs> I, I like screen them out until they demand my attention, which I start eating papers on my desk, which drives me crazy. But anyway. Um, so I think that's great. Um, uh, um, Mike, any other comments on this piece? No, I like it. I think this especially will be helpful trying to teach people, you know, community wise. Um, yeah, I was, as you were going through this mentioning visual data, I'm kind of drawing in my notes here, sort of a uh, infographic type of thing, you know, with changing the seasons here, spring, fall, yep. Yep. basically these dates, you know, sort of picturing a, a roadmap, so to say, events. So we can do that too, that's all good. Yeah, I, I think um, there could be a variety of graphics that we kind of yeah. put out there. I think as we think about all the different things we're gonna share on the website and other places, the more graphical we can be yeah. with it, the better. Um, know, yeah, different different media, different, um, different uh, engagement pieces. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're making me think it would be awesome. <laughs> to have a, an actual logo for the school committee election 2022. Yeah. So they, they see I it. I bet you we could get a, uh, are there any like graphic design students or anything that we could ask to? Uh, Probably in the high school. Yeah. You know, you know, funny when we That's walked through Toronto, really. they had a bunch of kids in that room who were working <clears> in Photoshop. <throat> when we walked by the graphic design room, I think that would be a great idea. Yeah. I'm sure I, get that get that involved. There's some sort of, I'm sure there's a civics or American history or something course could get involved if you want to go that way, you know? Yeah. Yes, that's true. And the, it'd be actually really cool to get the students involved in just the forums. The yeah. students could host a forum. I love that. For yeah, why not? the seniors and the, I mean, they're eligible to vote when they're seniors. Is that right? <clears throat> the voting age? If they're 18. Uh, yeah, 18. Yeah, could be. So some of them, or they could or they could organize a forum to engage the, the older students through the public in the community. That would be an interesting thing. But anyway, I was picturing all of a sudden some, some kind of little vibrant logo that people would see over and over on anything that goes out. Yeah. 
that would be a good cue. Um, the seal we have now is pretty formal looking. You know, I think something that's a little more modern would be great. Yeah, I mean, something that's particular to the election. Right. right? Not, not the school district per se. Um, uh, hang on, I'm just making a note. One thing I was going to say um, is what I'll also do coming out of this is maybe just I might reformat the the um, size of some of these boxes a little bit and add just a couple of sentences at the top of this page informing the group you're presenting to us to why we're showing them this and what it is um, as kind of like a cover cover statement across the top of this. Okay. Um, so I might take a stab yeah. at that and then I'll I'll, I'll let yeah. you guys know when it's updated and we can we can share Good. that. Good. All right. All right, good. We ready to move on? The second, just real quick, the second slide I have oh, I here. I forgot there was a second, sorry, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Is FAQs. And so I think we don't necessarily need to go through all these right now today, but as I started writing these up, it became evident to me that there are kind of two sets of them. I think we have to decide whether we want to display them separately or not. Um, but I think about what kind of questions are the voters and residents of the town going to have, people who aren't interested in running. Um, when was the last election? Why wasn't there an election in 2020? What seats are open? Who gets to vote? Um, and that's obviously a pretty, probably the most complicated one, not only who votes, but who do you get to vote for? And people yeah. understanding how that's all going to work. Um, and then I think on the candidate side, hey, what's the role of a school committee member? How much time do members typically spend working on school committee business? Who's eligible to run for a seat? What seats are open? What's the term of office? And, and I wanted to look at just kind of do some Google searches of other districts, especially in Massachusetts, who might have published a similar FAQ yeah. and see if we're missing anything here. Um, and then this is one piece that I, in particular, would want to bring to the full committee to review and vote on, especially when it comes to how we answer these FAQs. Yeah, I, um, one that came to mind for the top section is, um, why is the 2022 school committee election so important? <clears throat> Um, or especially important or something. I want to elevate it in some way because this particular, I mean, you could say every election is important, but I think we could put out an argument that this election has particular importance. Um, what, as you, as you asked that, because I'm thinking about two different things, Susan, when you think about that question, how would you think the answer to that would look? Well, to me, uh, and I had said this to the committee, this, the next school committee will be involved in um, selecting the next superintendent and uh, approving the next five-year district improvement plan. Um, so those are pretty significant um, influences, I would say. And I we wanted this later, but. Mm -hmm. Or next five years, I would say, yeah. Uh, yeah. or four years, maybe is the term. Yeah, four office. years for the election, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the, the longest term of office. Yeah. Because yeah. when I think about the important, one of the things I thought about is also a little different than what's happened in the past and what's going to happen in the future in terms of the number of candidates on the ballot and the seats they're going to be in for. Um, so there's a, there's a component there as kind of what what's unique about this one compared to the ones we're going to have in the future. Yeah, maybe make yeah. that a separate question even. Yeah. You know, you think about it, it's the first election since... Um, 2020. What do I want to say about um, combining of the district since... Um, 28, oh, oh. Regionalization? Yeah. Yeah. Because originally, when the regional committee was created, they took the three people from Berlin and the three people from Boylston, right, and put them together under the yeah. single committee. Right. There's a, and there's a lot of different answers. There's a lot of, it's a loaded question. There's a lot of different things that people can be informed of on what makes this one unique. First so one's you mean in this question do you mean what makes the committee unique or this election election yep okay 
And so do you want all three of those questions or are you generating here? I'm just generating. I think we might end up re reorganizing a little bit. I'm just kind of taking some notes down here based on what we're talking about. Because I think this is what I was thinking about when you asked, when you first mentioned important, you know, were you thinking some of the things you were saying, which I think are appropriate, you know, um, you know, uh, district plan. Hiring. Do we know that Jeff isn't going to be interested in our, an extended contract? I mean, that's what he said to us. He's, he's, he's got his retirement date in plan in place, I think. Okay. Um, so that's what he's always said. I did ask him, I think I asked him, we can confirm this with him, but I, I did ask him if, is that okay to say publicly? And he, uh, at school committee, and he had said yes. So. Because his contract right now goes through 2025. It uh, uh, is that right? That doesn't sound yeah. right. I, I looked at it actually. Um, 2025, this is 2021. Yeah. Yeah. January, is it January of 2025? Um, he, he was hired in, in January, he started in January. So that, that might be. So the contract I see here, no, it's, so it's, it was signed by Jeff and um, Jim in January of 2020. Okay. For a five so year. It's really like the end of 2024 that he's. No. The agreement commences on July 1st, 2020, and terminates on July 30th, 2025. Oh, okay, that's good, Jen. And by June 30th, 24, so a year in advance, he has to inform the committee in writing whether he desires to commence negotiations for another agreement right. and renew it. So that 24, 25 year, is technically contractually his final year. Now he could choose to to leave earlier, right? Yes. Or he could choose to um, continue in the role beyond that, or, or want desire to continue in the role beyond that. But right now his contract goes through June thirtieth, twenty five. So th th this is accurate then when we say that within the four next four years there will be a new superintendent. Yes, that, that superintendent contract. Yeah. Yeah, because his contract would expire June 2025, and there would be an election in November 2025. No. No. 24. 24 and then 26. So. Yeah, some of some people won't some, be. The, the four-year term people, if they say for all four years, will be involved in that. Yeah. The, the two-year term people might not. Right, unless they ran again. Right. And then the, um, yeah, so it's either contract renewal or a new contract. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, so the, the answers to that third bullet are the same answers for the fourth bullet, right? So that we choose between those questions, right? Yeah. Yep. So which one, I don't know, which is more um, compelling when you read it without the answers there. I'm assuming that you wouldn't include those responses. Those are our notes. Yeah, those are our notes for right now, I think, until we get the committee to, answer, to kind of review the answer to all of them. But, um, I, my only comment about importance um or like even uniqueness is that um is that an opinion versus a fact and the fact is that we think these items are likely to come before the committee we know some of right. them are yeah whereas are other things important that's kind of us deciding they're important or not um yeah so i, I, we just, I think that we can think about that before we present it to the committee yeah i think that's i you know that's fine i i'm happy to keep these uh factual yeah um, yeah, the uniqueness one uh, should stay because you know it is first time since regionalization. Every seat is available. Uh, it's the first yeah. time both towns are voting, etc. You know, 
I think the uniqueness part should stay. The other two, I agree with what you said. And I'll tell you what, this is one that I, if I was running and, and not knowing what I know now, this is in, this would be really interesting to me to understand what what things do we, uh, there's always going to be things that come to the table that we can't predict, but there are certain yeah. things we know are going to yeah. come into play in this period. Yeah. When does the current, the current improvement plan, Susan, expires when? Um, this is year four, right? This is year four, yeah. So at the end of next year next school year so 22 23 end of 23 yes um so new district improvement plan which will be 2023 to 2020 yeah well i mean you could phrase the second one the same way new superintendent contract june yep. 2025 just take out expires yeah yep. um and then yeah, the other thing even might... the two-year people are going to be involved in that because you're if, if jeff tells us june 24 that he right. doesn't want to be renewed you haven't had an election yet all six people who are elected are going to be part of that right they may or may not be voting on it if they don't get re-elected after the end of the two-year term for another four-year term but they certainly um we're going to have a new superintendent before he leaves this is actually where a nice little visual timeline would be a nice slide yeah. to have up there at some point that shows the um, intervals of the election cycle against when these things are happening. Yeah, um, even, even for, especially when we look at the information we wanna publish on that election site, on this, that'd be a great yeah. thing to have there. The other thing that Mike had just said underneath the fourth bullet, um, yep. Was the, is the first time that both towns are voting for candidates in both towns, right? Is that what it was, Mike? I forget how you said it. But. Yeah, that's still that's that's the case, right? That's fact. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's new. That's going to be new to everybody. Everybody's going to shake their head at that at first. Right. I mean, I I, I had a conversation with somebody and. Someone who's you know somewhat knowledgeable on this, and and um, it was a foreign concept that all six of us represent the residents of both towns and are elected by the residents of both towns, as opposed to what they're more familiar with from the past, of there being a Boylston school Election. committee and a Berlin okay. school committee. Yes, correct. Yep. Um, <clears throat> you might okay. think about this piece too, Mike. This first time that both are voting as an answer here as to who votes yep right yeah because these two as i thought about these two questions there, there's some, there's some similarity between what, what's going to go in the answer to these two um oops sorry <laughs> it, is, it is a feature that makes this election unique um It's sort of the only time. Yeah. Will be open, yeah. And I think we understand the reasoning for that in order to create the staggered term, but that's that's one I think that a visual is going to be huge for people to see. Hey, we're voting for six. Three of them are going to be a two-year term. Three of them are going to be a, a four-year term. And then, hey, what happens two years from now? Well, these two get, but then two years after that, these two, in, in kind of showing over maybe yeah, a different towns, period, in. what that looks like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I think I think from a from a timing standpoint, Susan, in terms yeah. of presenting to the committee, we have a committee report on the agenda for the meeting on October twenty what sixth. Yeah. Um, my suggestion would be that we report out to the committee there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe give them a, a I don't know if we wanted to like the first read on some of this, 
or if we have to, but then kind of dive into this maybe more at that November 9th meeting, I think it is. Okay. Yeah, so how much time do you think uh, we want at this next meeting? We're gonna be planning that next Tuesday, so. I would suggest that we could present this, the basic timeline to the committee on at that this, meeting. Yeah, this timeline here. Cool. In the questions, but not the answers. And, and, put the, and questions, the questions, yes. Just the questions. And then kind of coming out of that, say that we're gonna have another subcommittee meeting between the meeting in October and the meeting in November, and we'll draft answers to these questions that the committee's reviewed and said these are the good questions to have. Um, and then we can read through those answers in November and then maybe vote on it in December. Yep. Yeah, so I think in, in December, what we wanna get to is a vote on uh, some of these core materials that we're gonna yeah. draw from, and as well as the specific kinds of activities that we want to engage in, so that the committee, whatever you, you go off to do, basically, you, you're sanctioned by the committee to, to speak on these topics, right? right? And so they, they need to know, like, what kind of forums are we talking about? What kinds of content would you be sharing? Um, uh, and whether you want to be uh, proposing to the committee that there be a point person for fielding questions, a contact person for fielding questions, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so by December, we should have approval for anything that you, of course, you can come back and say later, yeah. oh, we would like to do this, but um, it would be good to have some of that front run, some of what we anticipate. I like that. And I, I think that um, in a perfect world, we're going to, the questions we get are going to be, the factual questions we get, we'll be able to point people to a resource where those answers are. And that way, you know, should someone email us and want to know something, we can reply back very quickly, send them the approved FAQ and yeah. information. And then we're not having to kind of make sure we have something approved from the committee. There's the answer. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, there will be other people who probably want to talk more about, you know, other non-factual things related to it. Um, and we can, you know, avoid that to whatever extent we're able to individually. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, and we need to, again, be able to point to things. So some people may say, oh, I want to talk directly with schools, some school committee members I know, or I feel comfortable contacting and just ask them questions about their experience on school committee. Um, but um, it would always be good to say, and there's a public forum where you can hear yeah. directly from school committee members and you can ask their, your questions. Because the they're going to come up to us at soccer games and t-ball games and, yeah. and, you know, recognize who we are and ask, and we're going to have whatever, you know, casual conversation we have there with them. But then being able to also point them right to the website, you know, shoot them a text right there while we're standing next to them and say, here yeah. you go, here's the information. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so back to my question, how much time do you figure on uh, this next school committee meeting to I think on? we can keep it to I think we can keep it to 10 minutes. Okay, Mike, it sounds sound good. Yep. 10 minutes this time and November 9th, you're thinking more like 20 minutes, 30. Yeah, I think uh, I, yeah, I think 20 will be fine, Susan. I, I think that we'll send out Prior to the in the meeting materials, we'll get the FA the, the first slide in the second side, short of the kind of additional bullets I put on here, just the yeah. questions. Yeah. Um, in front of people so they can see what those are and they can come with any additional ones or even send them in to us before the meeting. Um, and then I think the first meeting can go pretty quick. And then we'll draft during our between then and this in the November meeting, we'll draft our proposed answers to these questions. Yeah. And then um, I think if there's any discussion, it'll likely be there. Um, okay. But I don't necessarily yeah. expect a ton. Because we're because as long as we're factual, I don't think we'll get a right. ton of you know debate. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so good. Thank you very much for your work on Thanks. that, your thought, and um, I look forward to taking that forward. That's good. Um, the election timeline feedback. Uh, so I did um, interact some more with the Mount Greylock district, the um, both town clerks 
in their reviews raise some particular questions, which is exactly what I want them to do, because I don't want to get down the line and have them say, wait, I thought you were ordering the ballots. Who's supposed to order the ballots? I mean, that was a question that came up. And it's like, yeah, well, I don't know. Let me go back to Mount Greylock and find out how they handle that. So we, we made a few more little kinds of um, additions and, and moved a, a couple of things around and this most current iteration. And uh, I heard from Boylston Town Clerk after review of this iteration, this looks good. Uh, I will check in, um, town clerks are only in their office Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it's my task to call Eloise and Berlin today and just see if there's anything else um, I imagine she would have let me know if there was, but I just want to confirm. So I think this is our most specific and complete version of the timeline now. And um, it is ready to go to school committee this, this time, this for this meeting. And then uh, it will go to this uh, town administrators and select board people um, in November. And when are you, when are you going to the select meetings, Susan? Yeah, they are, um, I can tell you, hang on. Um, Boylston is November 8th. And Berlin is November 15th. Okay, perfect. And I would think, you know, I think our committee's meeting is, is ours the 9th? Yes. So I would think that coming out of the meeting in October, you'd also be able to bring, even though the committee hasn't reviewed the answers yet, you could bring the two things here because we would have reviewed it in October. Yeah. Along with yeah. your um, longer detailed one. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'll solicit their input according to whatever time they have on those items that we talked about earlier. Um, okay, any other questions about this timeline? I feel really good that we have, I, I, I'm getting feedback from uh, the town clerks that they're really happy to have this worked out. Um, they had so many questions at the start and I feel like we've resolved, so far we've resolved them all. And, I, and my assumption is something's gonna come up uh, that we didn't think of, um, but we're in so much better position to be able to handle. It's not likely to be a big item. It's likely to be a small item. So do you know, or does it come up in your conversations with them, Susan, as to what other town offices are going to be up for election at the same time? No, I haven't asked that. Cause I know that the, I, I my recollection is that Boylston, the town, the selectman's election is in like May. Yeah, right. And the we're going to be on the ballot with, you know, the congressmen and. Right. I I don't I don't think it it probably is going to be uh, town offices on this ballot. Yeah, in in May, yeah. right? I don't know if they're going to be. Are we going to be the only local election on the ballot yeah. in November twenty yeah. three? Yeah, I I'll check on that. I, I assume yeah. that that's probably so. but I will confirm that, good question. Okay, all right, uh, I talked to Jeff about the town clerk position and um, our interest in having the town clerk position reside in the central office. And um, Jeff's, Jeff did not wanna do that because, uh, primarily because he didn't want to overload Christie's position, which is already very, very full with many things and uh, is stressful. Yep. Um, he, I said, uh, you know, one of our concerns is that the, with the changeover in school committee roles, it's just so easy to miss some critical date. And, um, and he said, uh, they're expecting that Chris, the Chris, Christie or whoever's in her position, um, when they receive the dates from the state and that first state letter that comes through um, that lists all the information in April, um, Christy will add that all to her calendars and she will send reminders to the district clerk 
oh, this is, you need to do this in the coming, whatever, two weeks by such and such a deadline. So she will serve as the reminder and the uh, monitor of the timeline of tasks, but the district clerk, our person, whoever we appoint needs to um, do the task. And so I felt like that, that could work because as long as that district clerk person is not out on a limb, uh, carrying the whole weight without anybody else helping them, especially if they're new, to monitor that timeline and make sure things, and, is, and I look through here you know, to see how many things have the district clerk's name on them, right? So you have that April 1st, notifi April 15th notification, which is critical. And then posting the open seats and uh, information about that and staying in clear touch with, anything you send out gets copied to the town clerks and then taking out nomination papers. You know, I think- And then, yeah. and then, then it's quiet until the election and the district clerk stores all the election materials and contacts the new school committee members. So there's, there's some deadlines up front um, yeah. and then it's quiet. Let me ask you a question. So the, the, when we created the subcommittees and appointed people to them, I know policy and superintendent evaluation in particular are almost a standing committee. I don't know what they're defined as what they are. I almost think that once we get through this cycle, it's going to be appropriate to have the election committee be a standing committee, a pretty, pretty easy one in the future potentially. But I, I think making sure that the committee always has, the school committee has a subcommittee of people that are paying attention, paying attention to this. Yeah will ensure that we're doing that. And I, I think establishing this as a standing committee in the future would be potentially appropriate. I just don't know what they do on the in-between years. So maybe it's a bi biennial standing committee. Yeah, or even just, you know, not much. <laughs> they, yeah, right. Just it, it Maybe it makes sense just because you've got someone paying attention so that they don't miss the April, the year before, deadline because I, I mean i felt bad for for angela last year when the whole thing got missed because i don't i don't think that was just on her shoulders right as the clerk and i think she, i think she might have felt that way a little bit as the clerk huh. oh i when, don't think it was i don't think it was angela i, I remember it came up in a, one of your committee meetings last year that i was watching where jim was talking to the the election process and why it didn't happen and all of that and I know Angela felt bad that she, she as clerk hadn't recognized the timeline and the, the, the fact we needed to be way in advance on this yeah. process to make it happen. Um, I wouldn't want us to just appoint a district clerk as a, one of the committee members and have it only be on yeah. his or her shoulders. Well, and so that goes to my next uh, comment. It, um, you know. I confirmed with Julie, who is our district sec our committee secretary, not our mm -hmm. clerk per se, that this this would not be a good role for her this year because she the two things that she's working on at the superintendent evaluation and the scholarships all take place in the spring. The yep. heaviest work is in the spring. So I wouldn't want those things to be distracting her from the things here. And so I was thinking that we should appoint uh, or I should appoint um, a district clerk on this committee who's already tracking this stuff and is already thinking and being on top of the um, timeline. And so I want to run that by the both of you to see if that would make sense to you to have the district clerk situated in the election subcommittee. Um, that's my first question. I don't have a problem with that. I can tell you that just personally, keeping track of specific dates and timelines. And I, I, I could lose track of that. I don't know that I'm personally the best person to do it. I would, I would just state that off the top. Okay. Mike? Uh, I'll do whatever you like, Susan. Sure. I, I kind of feel I'm the same type of person as Adam probably, but uh, I don't know. You said Christy's going to help out remembering things. Yeah. 
in terms right. of yeah reminders for dates and and i know and i think that's a question for you too adam is if christy is providing those reminders or the committee is starting every committee meeting saying what's coming up let's right. check yeah. the timeline that's, um, that's probably a good point to keep there that, yeah. does that help does that yes. change your your sense about oh okay yeah, i actually could manage that i guess one question one of the things that's on there is that um interested candidates can get nomination papers from the district clerk correct how would that work yeah so the um I, I was asking that too because i said to eloise it seems to me when we go pick up uh, uh nomination papers from you you tell us stuff like you and you educate us at the same time like this is how many well obviously the district clerk would need to review some of that information meet with the town clerks and make sure she has that information or he has yeah, that information fine. and um and then i i assume that they would say if you have other questions that you, that come up contact your town clerk yeah um but yes, yeah, they, can that's fine. Up, they can pick them up from the town clerk technically. Um, and they and they get mailed, they may get mailed to you. I forget who they actually get mailed to, but um the I my guess is that what, what should happen there. If I were doing that job, I would go to the town clerks and say, you know, teach me what I need to tell people, teach me what I need to be aware of, and then any other things that come up, I'm going to direct them to you. Yeah. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah. Um, so uh, I, the reason I was asking about you, Mike, I mean, uh, Adam, is because Mike's already on the policy subcommittee and on this committee. Yep. And, uh, and he takes uh, minutes at the policy subcommittee and so I was thinking you probably have a slightly lighter load than he does at this time although you could get pulled into negotiations depending on Megan's schedule and the timing of things in negotiations um, yeah so I, I'm willing to do it let's just make sure that it remains an agenda item in every one of our meetings yeah. to look at the upcoming dates and deadlines and when it comes to people getting the papers um, you know I, I would most likely encourage them to go to the town clerk to get them as opposed to stopping by my house to get them or wherever else they do oh, it. Oh yeah, right. I know it's like, where do you want to um, keep that? I would say, I, I would I would then say my preference, because there's a little bit of record keeping that goes into that too, that you've given them out and that they, they're out and they're not back. So I, my the way I'd approach that specifically with people wanting papers would be to send, encourage people strongly to go to the town clerk to get them. You know what the the issue probably there uh, the advantage to having a district clerk also uh, distribute them is the town clerk's offices are only open like Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yep. It's yeah. very limited hours. So if someone can't do it, look, I'll 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 have them wherever I have them and can meet someone somewhere to give them to them um, yeah. if that's not going to work for them. I'm not saying I'm not going to do it, but my 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 default answer would be, can you go to the town clerk and get them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, look on every agenda. Yeah. Okay. So at this next meeting, I will um, make sure it's on my list here. Point district clerk. And uh, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll name you Adam and name Mike as an alternate. So if something happens, and we need a backup, we're covered. Tell you what, my wife would be much better at it than I am. <laughs> Enlist her support. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's also one of those things that's like the first time through, it makes you anxious. And then probably to do it a second time would be like, okay, I get this now. Yep. Um, all right. So let me see. Agenda is now lost. Um, I shared the dates of the next select board meetings. And then I think the, the uh, since it's 10.03, I think what we should do is set our, do we have a next meeting date? We don't, right? No. 
set a next meeting date and um, and uh, identify what we think the core agenda should be for that meeting. So we're now on October 14th. Our next meeting is the 26th. And then the next meeting is you know, quite soon after on November 9th. So it sounds like we want to prepare some FAQs and stuff for that for that ninth meeting, correct? Yeah. So we're probably looking at maybe meeting the week of the 26th, the 25th. Sorry, I was I was thinking that going into the 26th, we're just going to share the FAQs as we have them now. Yeah, correct. And then um, the question that becomes: Do we want to meet at right like immediately after? The meeting on the 26th or do we want to give ourselves a week to work on the answers to those before we come together maybe on the third or the fourth okay we could you could do that too yep i didn't know if you wanted to de discuss anything after that meeting before you worked on things or you want you feel like we'll leave that meeting pretty clear to just go to work and bring the next product yeah and, and i can even set this document up shared so that if you guys want to go in and edit any of the answers you can do that yeah. in the interim um that's a good idea yeah so maybe right. we go to, maybe go to the the fourth november 4th uh hang on that is we that is when the masc conference is going on okay um and i don't know i just don't know the schedule of those sessions i know you and i are booked for that right adam i, I haven't booked it yet because i'm waiting i was waiting to see what my schedule was going to look oh, like okay. that week. okay um and, and knowing it's remote i can just add it did you later. sign up for that mike no i'm i think i'm away actually okay uh what about oh yeah it's ghost cheese it's the what, are the, what are the dates of that susan yeah, it looks like the third on, but I don't know how much activity there is on that first day. I'm just not sure. Oh, you want to do the second? Election day. We have a policy subcommittee committee meeting that day, Mike. Um, and I have another meeting that morning. Well, in that case, I mean, look, there's no reason we're- the third. Let's, let's put it like, if we put it early on the third, it'll, it'll probably be fine. Okay. Does that work for you, Mike? I'm um, checking. I think so. Um, yeah. What time? Like same time, nine o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. November third, yeah. Wednesday, nine right. nine to ten, and our agenda will be to review uh, draft FAQ documents. Yeah. And. Maybe any other preparation or discussion yeah. around the presentation to the selectmen? Yeah, we, well, I can debrief. Uh, let's see. I think the review of the FAQ document will be sufficient because that will, that's the new piece that I would want to be able to put in front of them. And then the other thing is that we have to get to work on is really what, what engagement strategies do we want to propose to the school committee and um, authorities? Uh, that we are going to want to get their approval on. Um, and so they would do a first read and discussion of that November 9th. So that we would need to have that in the shared drive by the 5th. Is that adequate time? Yeah, I think so. Because we can start working on it now too. We know some of these FAQs are going to be on there, right? So I don't need to wait until right. the meeting in two weeks to start writing a little bit. And I can get it shared with you guys. We can start writing on our answers, and then um, we'll confirm the questions with the committee on the twenty sixth, and be able to share them, share with them our suggested responses to them on the ninth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we'll just need to draft whatever the, those engagement strategies and authorities that we want to propose. Yep. All right. That sounds like a good full agenda. Is an hour an adequate amount of time, or do we want to plan for an hour and a half? We might want to give ourselves if we end early. That's okay. But yeah, I'll block time. it on my calendar for an hour and a half. That's fine. I, I, yeah, I, I, I can do that, but I'm I definitely got to jump out a couple minutes before ten thirty. Okay. All right. So um, that would be good. That just in case maybe we want to 
do some drafting during the meeting about what those that engagement strategy and authorities are so we can make that text really clear. Um, okay, I think we have our agenda. We have our next meeting. Is there anything else we need to be addressing today? We need to approve the minutes of the last meeting in this. Oh, uh, you know what? We've never really done that in our subcommittees. Okay. Um, I kind of, I kind of figured that we are approving them when I send the draft out. To I think I, I think I did that last time, right? Didn't I send the draft? You got yes, I did. And I said if you, you know, let me know. Otherwise, if I don't hear from you by Friday, I'm sending them on to Christy. Yep. Um, and so I kind of think of that as the approval of the minutes. That's fine with me. Okay. All right, so I will do the same thing. I'll write up this meeting and I will um, probably post it in our folder for this meeting as a Google Doc and then just ask you to put comments in or you know, make your edits clear if you see anything that needs to be revised. And then uh, this is Thursday. Can we have that done by tomorrow? Yeah, I can take a look at them as soon as I Okay, all right, great. Uh, that way we'll get them in the share drive in time. Oh, I guess we have time. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. I appreciate your work on the um, PowerPoint thing today. That was helpful. Thank and you. forward ho. So this would be good to bring it to school committee. I'll feel good about, you know, kind of getting it to that place. I think we're, I think we're making progress. Awesome. All right. Thank, Thank you. you guys. All.